Well, this is definitely a video that I don't want to have to film. And I guess at this point it is what it is. It's going to probably end up being a long video, but this is going to be the truth, the untold story. This is going to be, well, this is something that I feel needs to be done. This is my response to yesterday. And real quick, let me just share with you a little bit about yesterday. You know, I woke up yesterday morning at 5.30. I had a really busy day for yesterday. I was going to see Banky. We're working with Banky. We're working with Chris. We're working with some new people. And I'm happy with what we're doing. You know, over the course of After Prison Show, over the course of how long we've been doing this, almost six years, we've worked with a lot of people. But you guys know that. And throughout all of this, there's definitely been some ups and downs. And... In one particular saga, the Danny chapter. I woke up at 5.30 yesterday morning and I saw some comments on Instagram saying that Danny was back. There was a link. I had to copy the link to go find this video. And I find this video and I see that it's a video, a new video featuring Danny. At first I thought it was just going to be something that was clipped from some old videos that we had done, but lo and behold, it was Danny, he was back. And when I first saw this, before even getting into the video, I was happy to see him. I was happy to see that he wasn't locked up or worse, and you know, he looked like he was doing good, but then immediately upon getting into this video and watching this, you know, all of that changed. I could never imagine that I was gonna be seeing a video from this guy, and this was gonna be such a malicious attack, uh, effort to try to sabotage me after prison show and really discredit everything that I've done, especially in regards to him. We definitely had our ups and our downs. A lot more than you guys are, well, you're gonna know today. A lot more than you guys had ever known in the past. And throughout everything that I went through with this guy, what I went through with this guy, because it was always him and I uh, having these bumps along the way, and some of them were pretty significant. I always tried to do the very best that I could in regards to him and having him as a part of After Prison Show. I had to do that. With everything that we had done with Danny, he was a huge part of After Prison Show, a huge success on After Prison Show. And I swear to you guys, I did everything in my power to try to always keep things okay between us. But I wasn't able to do that. By the time it was all said and done, and obviously by judging from this video that he's just, you know, recently uploaded himself, I definitely wasn't able to do that. And also real quick before I get into this, I want to say this. You know, we have had drama here on After Prison Show. Certain people don't work out, certain people move on. Danny definitely did not work out. And sometimes I put things out there and people don't like the fact that and it's a bad choice of words that I've used. It's the truth, blasting people. When you mess up, you know, I got to put it out there. I got to, or that was what I was thinking in the past. I had to have clear separation between whatever it was that that person was doing in After Prison Show because I always wanted After Prison Show to stand for something positive, inspirational, motivational, and just trying to help. And if somebody stepped outside of that, well, that needed to be addressed. And we've done that a few times here on After Prison Show, maybe even quite a few times. And I guarantee because of those situations, that's diminished the reputation of me and this channel. But what I will not do, I will not let somebody sit there and just tell blatant lies about me and this channel. And I'm going to set the record straight in regards to a few of those things here today. But what I was trying to say was, you know, when I make this separation between people and, you know, we have to cut people off or move on because that's just not the right person to be working with or whatever the situation may be, I had said something in the past, you know, I don't have nothing to worry about because I'm clean. And I know that I can sleep well at night because I do the very best that I can on a daily basis with whatever we are trying to do. But never in a million years could I imagine that somebody especially the person that After Prison Show helped more than anyone, would take it upon themselves to just make up shit. That's what Danny did with this little comeback video that he made. And I probably should have expected something like this would happen. That somebody would just go on a malicious attack. You know, making up things or whatever. But here we are today. My response, setting the record straight, the absolute truth, start to finish in relation to Danny here on After Prison Show. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it was a crazy ride. All of this starts back on August the 2nd, 
2018. On August the 2nd of 2018, that would be the day that I would, I would meet Danny for the very first time. And I never had any idea that I was going to meet him. The story starts before him. And it was on this day that Dave, me, and Cody were on our way to a job fair that was taking place in another city that was hosted by reentry and probation and also this program that was called Workforce. We we're on our way to Norfolk because they are having a job fair that is hosted by the U.S. probation. And this is actually the federal probation. But I ran across this posting that was on a job group on Facebook where I first learned about this job fair and this is a job fair that's supposed to have all sorts of resources to help individuals who are trying to find jobs with records or who are just coming home from prison now i've tried to contact the people who are running this this has actually been put together not only by this probation department but also by norfolk reentry i've been trying to get in contact with reentry because i want after prison show to align ourselves with this organization and see what we can do to help be a part of this and to network. I want After Prison Show to be doing more positive things. But since trying to get in contact with these folks, we haven't heard back from them. So today, we're going to go out there. We're going to see if we can meet who's in charge of this. We're going to see what kind of networking we can do. We're going to see what kind of resources we can gather. And we're going to also try to see if there's any kind of possibility that After Prison Show could align itself with what's already going on with this reentry. Now, it was right before we were going to this job fair that, you know, I had been doing some work trying to align After Prison Show with reentry and also this workforce program. I was trying to get in contact with people, try to network, and I wasn't having any luck with that, but then I found out about this job fair that they were hosting and I figured that this would be a great opportunity to be able to go and try to network with some people that we were trying to meet and that's what we were going to do. Now we were chronicling this. We made a video about this. Here's After Prison Show trying to align ourselves with even more positive things and really trying to become some sort of bigger thing in the local community. And with the fact that we were chronicling this and making a video, we knew we weren't gonna be able to film inside of this job fair. So I had on a microphone and I recorded all of the audio from that job fair. And I wanted to be able to do that. I wanted to be able to have that audio to share with you guys like how this entire event went. You know, Danny had made a comment in this video that he uploaded saying that when I first met with him, I think he said something along the lines of he didn't even really want to do the videos and you know that I was wearing a secret camera. I wasn't. I was wearing a microphone. He found out later that I was wearing the microphone and had no problem with that. But I'm going to share with you right now the introduction between Danny and me at this job fair. You getting any good information here, man? Yeah, I'm getting some, some, but the thing is, I, I don't put too much confidence on it. Jobs are not really easy to, for me to come by. What, he, what is he about? Uh, trying to help you get your license back through community service work. Oh, okay, I never had a license, so I'm good. All right. <laughs> what, uh, you did Fed time? Yeah, I did Fed in state. I did 40 years. 40 years, man? Yeah. Yeah. If you don't mind me asking, I mean, you ain't even got to tell me, but what, what was it for? Murder. How long you been home for? Um, I just seven months. I'm still homeless. I can't get nobody to help me. Where are you located at? Like, where are you at right now? I'm at the um, at the summer program called Nest Program up in um, Ninth Ninth Bay in the church. Is this this Norfolk? Yeah, this Norfolk, but it's only three nights a week. The other four I stay in the beach. And what do you do out the beach? There's a shelter out there no, for I you. Just sit and lay in the sand and sleep. So what do you mean? So you've been home for seven months now, yeah. and you just can't find no opportunity. Nobody wants to give yeah. you. The thing is, I'm waiting for SSI because I am handicapped mentally and physically. Obviously, I, I mean, yeah, I can me. imagine. Like that, that type of time probably yeah. took a major toll on you. And, um, and I'm, I'm trying to find a part-time job in the evening because my PO got me booked up in the morning with all these appointments. I can't even keep a job in the daytime, so I got to work at night. Look, man. My name is Joe. What's your name? My name is Danny. Danny? Yeah. Dude, it's a pleasure to meet you, man. And the first thing I want to say is I served time as well. Nowhere near the amount of time you served. I, I did seven years for drug charges. Yeah. But I came home uh, in 2015, and I try to help people the most that I can. I got a pretty good organization. It's called After Prison Show. Oh, nice. And it's got, a lot of, it's got a lot of impact. It's got a lot of reach. And we've got our own little resources as well. We take on little projects with individuals. And I'm telling you, Danny, you would be somebody I'd be willing to help if you would be willing to, you know, talk with us further. And we just would need it. We just need to know how to be able to get in contact yeah, with you. Got a yeah, we definitely got a number. Hey, look, I'm gonna give. This is Danny right here, Dave. Danny served a, a load of time, man. You ever heard of YouTube? No. 
it's a website, okay? And, and people put videos on this website. That's what I do for a living. And I got a lot of people that follow what I do. But what I do is called After Prison Show. And with this, we chronicle people's stories who have come home and are definitely dealing with some hardships. And you I would be- I don't have a problem telling them exactly what the government has done. They've done shit for me. And look, nothing but abandon me, stress me out, and suffer from mental illness. And all oh, my PO keep threatening me to put me back. He just violated me. I told him to go suck a dick, and I told him to do the same thing. Because I'm at a point I don't give a f right. You know? Well, I appreciate. I'm gonna say this first of all. I do appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. And if there's anything we can do to help you, man, I would love to try to do what we can for you. If you yeah, need I'll like, give you a call. Is, is there a way that you can call me though? Can yeah, you get access I, to a phone? Yeah, I got a phone. Oh, you do got a I phone? Got, I got you want my phone. I do want your phone. Matter of fact, Dave, write that down. I got an extension for two days, but I got a friend that's going to lend me some money to pay it. What I would do, if you would be willing, this is what I would like to do. Write your name and number. It's right right here. I'll put it in my wallet. I'll hold your stuff for you, Danny. Okay, thank you. Listen, if you would be willing to share your story, Danny, dude, I'll pay you to share your story. Because you are the type of an individual that I'm looking for. Somebody who's served an ass load of time. Somebody who's definitely dealing with some major struggles. And if there's some stuff that we can do to help you, man, that's my word. We're going to help you, man. Uh, when would you like to hook up? Because I'm, I'm interested already. I, I Look, need some help. I really do. I'll go with you right now. If that's the case, we'll go. I share this with you because Danny said he didn't really want to do this. He didn't really want to start making videos. First lie right there. Just want to put that out there. When I introduced myself and told him about After Prison Show, he was all for it. And it was from that very day right there, August the 2nd, 2018, the day that we went to this job fair, happened to run into Danny who was there, home from prison after 40 years through two different prison sentences. He had been home for seven months and he was struggling. It was on that very day we left from that job fair with Danny and we began working with him immediately. And he was absolutely all for this. By August the 10th, 2018, seven days later, we would upload the very first video featuring Danny, Life After 40 Years in Prison. That would end up being a three-part series, and people really started rocking with this man. People really started rooting for him. They were, they were feeling him. And with the amount of outreach that we were receiving during this time, because we were receiving a ton of feedback on Danny. So many people wanted to reach out and try to help this man. I mean, this was incredible. We had never really seen anything like this before. We had featured stories, but no story really caught on as quickly as with Danny. He was a very likable guy on camera, and his story was super compelling. A lot of people were reaching out. They wanted to help. We wanted to help. We wanted to not only be able to share this man's story, I wanted to not only be able to share this man's story, I wanted to be able to help this dude. And it was just a couple of weeks after that that we had put together the very first GoFundMe for Danny. And we didn't have no idea what this thing was gonna do. We didn't know if it was gonna be successful or not. And lo and behold, we put this GoFundMe together. I think it was like a thousand or a $1,500 goal. This thing hit that immediately. I donated, I was the first person to donate to that too. $100. By the time it was all said and done, we had raised over $5,000 for this man. I've got screenshots. $5,597 is what we raised for this man. So now we had this money and it was time to really put that money to good use. By August the 31st through September the 2nd, we uploaded another three-part series starting over after 40 years in prison. And it was in that series that we showcased what we did with that money. Helped Danny get an apartment where I had to actually go in and speak for this man. Okay, yeah, we've got this money to be able to get this man an apartment, but who's going to rent to him? I went in there and I spoke for this guy like I was, I gave it my all. That's the best that I can tell you. I said, here's a man who's made a lot of mistakes in his life. He's been out for seven months. He's been homeless. He's got no rental history, no credit, and really no job. But he's got the money to be able to afford this apartment. He just needs a second chance. Oh, and by the way, we're chronicling all of this through this huge series that we've created on YouTube, Life After 40 Years in Prison. These people gave him a chance. Double deposit and security, I think it was $2,400, somewhere around there. Rent was 800, he had to pay that three times. $2,400, $700 for a moped, bank account. We took him to Walmart and he took the rest of that money. That was his. But from that very first GoFundMe, we've got the man the apartment, got the moped, he got a bank account, he even started working. It was shortly thereafter that money became an issue. And I was paying this man every time that we were doing videos, but it wasn't enough money. 
And I think, if I can remember correctly, I think I wasn't paying Danny all that much at first. And, you know, at first, when this took place, I was kind of mad about this because I was like, well, damn, man, we did all of this for you with this GoFundMe. You got a job and I'm paying you for every video that we're doing and you want even more money. But I had to understand where he was coming from. He was becoming successful on After Prison Show. His videos were starting to pick up. Not all of them, but some of them. We had our first little bump in the road right there behind money. And I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of this is going to have to deal with money. So I realized where Danny was coming from, and at that point, I put him on a weekly payroll. I was giving this man $400 a week, and we weren't even working with him every day. Now, mind you, $400 a week, and this went on for some months, $400 a week, we might film with him once, maybe twice a week, and he was also working another job, so he was collecting two paychecks. He was doing pretty damn good for himself. Oh, and also, there were times, you know, where I would just straight up pay his rent when he couldn't pay his rent. There was that too. I didn't know when to tie that in, but I need to just throw that in there right there. So I was definitely doing the damnedest that I could do, paying this man a decent amount of money. You know, for anybody who would ever think that I didn't play fair with this guy when it came to money, I absolutely did. Fast forward all the way through 2018. I wish I knew exactly how many videos we filmed together in that year. It was probably 30 videos at the most. Maybe not even that many. I, I don't necessarily know. But we worked with him all through 2018. And by the end of it, by December, two major things would take place right at the same time. And both of these things would cause hiccups in the road. Major bumps. A lot of turbulence. The first thing that would happen was something that had never happened before with anybody who we had worked with here on After Prison Show. And that was Hollywood reached out to me about Danny. Never had this happen before. Now, mind you, during this time as well, I've also got other production companies reaching out to me, wanting me to go on some of these TV shows, wanting me to do specials, and also wanting to make a reality show about After Prison Show. That's what I had going on. And all of this was all happening at the same time. So then Hollywood reaches out to me, a producer. I'm not going to put this man's name out there. He's no Steven Spielberg. No disrespect to you. I'm sure you're probably watching this video. He was a really nice guy. I looked him up. He was definitely legit. He reaches out to me and says that he's having lunch with a Hollywood actor friend of his. And this Hollywood actor friend, who's pretty known, I mean, he's not a Brad Pitt or nothing, and no disrespect to you either, they're having lunch and he shows them, the, the actor shows the producer life after 40 years in prison and they're both just so blown away by this. The actor wants to portray Danny in a full motion picture. And I'm going to show you right here an email that I had received right during this time just to try to add a little more proof to this situation. I get the email first, which leads to a phone call. We end up on the phone talking about these guys want to come out here. They want to meet Danny. They want to study him. They want to become Danny. They want to make this movie called The Holy Beast. They don't have no idea what the movie should be about. I'm telling them. I said, well, you know, a good idea would be here's a man that got done doing 40 years in prison. He's back out here in society trying to make it and who probably society never thought was going to get another chance out here. Sounded like a pretty good pitch for a movie, if I say so. They loved that idea. They wanted to start putting together a script and trying to shop for a budget. But during this first phone call that I had with this producer guy, I told this guy, I said, hey, look, I don't really need nor want to be in the middle of this thing, and I damn sure am not going to stand between Danny and any kind of success like this. So look, why don't I just introduce you to this guy and you guys can do what you want to do. And the reason why I was saying this was because I was already having a little bit of bumps along the road with Danny arguments and things like that. And if this thing went south, I didn't want him blaming me for this. And spoiler alert, this thing would go south. So when I tell them, hey, look, let me just introduce you to him. You guys can work out the details and, you know, whatever. They said, oh, no, 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 Joe, no. We want you to be an associate producer on this thing. And we're talking about trying to put together a $5 million budget. And when I heard that, I'm thinking to myself, oh, y'all about to pay this man. Damn. And shit, I'm probably going to get a decent little chunk of change too. Now, I know $5 million ain't a whole lot of money to make no movie with. But I'm going to be honest with you. 
I didn't even care if this thing succeeded. I knew Danny stood a chance of getting paid if this thing worked out, and so did I. That's just being honest with you. This is gonna be a very honest and candid video. I told Danny about this and I was very hesitant to do so because, you know, people reach out from time to time and it's usually bullshit. Not all the time, but some, you know, sometimes it is. But after as much effort as they were putting into this idea at first, you know, I told Danny, I said, hey, look, Hollywood's reaching out. They want to make a movie about you. And with the success that we were having on After Prison Show and his videos, some of them were, you know, really doing major numbers. And then Hollywood reaching out, you got to imagine, at least my thought on this was, was this began to change him. This was the time that started changing Danny. You know, because at first, he was a really humble dude. He was. But that would begin to change. Hollywood was reaching out. They were talking about contracts and this and that. We were having these conference calls. Danny was talking with the actor. I mean, this was, uh, this was some big stuff going on. This was taking place right around December, I believe. And it would be also in December of 2018 where I would come up with the idea, Danny, you haven't seen your family in over 40 years. What if we sent you home to go see your family? I said, we'll put together, I mentioned this. I said, I will put together another GoFundMe for you. Can't guarantee what it'll do. I mean, we just raised $5,000 plus for you earlier in the year. But who knows? Maybe we raise $1,000, $2,000 for you. You get to go home, spend your first Christmas in 40 years with your family. He was all for that idea as well. We put together this GoFundMe, and this thing raised $14,331. This was a scary amount of money that we had raised. It was too much money, in my opinion. But that's how much people loved this man. People were donating thousands of dollars to this man in his first Christmas. That's how much they believed in him. I believed in this guy. You know what's crazy, real quick? I got five pages of notes for this video. Like, I typed all of this out this morning. I haven't even, haven't even gone through these. I'm, I might have to resort back to those. $14,331 is what we raised for this man. We were going to send this man home to go see his family. Bought him a bus ticket, and I came over to his house right before he was getting ready to leave, and I brought him $5,000 in cash of that $14,331. So here is the first portion okay. of the GoFundMe money for you. This is $5,000. Yeah, you can count it. It's been counted in the bank, mm -hmm. and... This is, thank you, from the entire After Prison Show army. Thank you. I love you. This year I'm going to spend it beautiful with my family. Enjoy it. You know, it's funny as I think about things that take place these days, like the little discrepancy, well, m my mistake, paying rabbits $70 a day, thinking, well, we're only cleaning floors, but not really valuing him as a friend and a person. That was a mistake that I made. I share that with you because I realize I made that mistake. If I make a mistake, I got no problem wearing that. But, you know, I would pay Rabbit afterwards, you know, when I was trying to correct it, and like one person said, oh, Joe, you shouldn't be paying him on camera. That's disrespectful. Well, I share that with you because it's situations like what I went through with Danny that make me really want to make sure I'm protecting myself and showcasing, here's some money. I don't do it all the time. I probably should, though. When we were getting ready to send Danny back home to see his family, I, I came over there, and thank God I didn't even have an envelope. I had $5,000 in cash. I flashed all that money. I wanted you, you guys watching these videos, to be able to see that. And thank God, given what has been just said by this man in this video that he filmed, claiming that I kept $9,000 of that $14,331 for myself? Do you know how damning that is? That is an absolute blatant lie. But the crazy thing is, is when I was watching this video, and I'll be honest with you, I, I didn't watch the whole thing. It would have gave me an ulcer. I heard enough. When I was watching this, and I know that this is not true, and a lot of people know that this is not true. I'm going to prove it to the rest of everybody that it's not true neither. When I'm watching this video and he's saying, that I kept $9,000 for myself. I mean, he just spouts that off like it ain't nothing for him to say that. And as I see it, I'm like, oh my God. You know, here's Danny who nobody has seen in forever. All the comments, where's Danny at? He pops up doing his own thing, completely staged and bullshit. And all he's doing is just 
trying to discredit and sabotage me. And there's gonna be people who believe that. There's gonna be people who rock with this man no matter what, and I can't stop that, nor would I even try to. All I'm gonna do is attempt to protect myself after prison show, and that's it. Even with all of this that I'm sharing with you guys, still wish the best for that man. And by the end of this, you're gonna think that that's a pretty crazy thing for me to be saying, especially after everything that we went through. That I'm gonna share. Have I mentioned that yet? I'm sharing everything. Danny, if you're watching this right now, I know you are mad. I know you're mad. This man made an accusation in this video, I kept $9,000. Thank God when we went over there that day, I filmed me giving him this money. And let me tell you something else, Danny. Share this with you too. Anytime that we would go over there and we would film with you, I would always give you the money prior to filming or right after we got done filming, like whatever I was paying you. And we always recorded that. We always had it on camera. Even though we didn't show it in the videos all of the time, we always recorded it. And I cannot remember like every little bullshit scenario that we went through. There were a many during and leading up to what was going on right now. But, you know, when I see myself handing you that cash, I know that I'm doing it to protect myself. Because let's just play devil's advocate here. There could come a time when you decide it would be a good idea to make a video and spread a bunch of lies about me. Which, can't even believe that you did that. I'm not even sad about it. Like, at this point, I'm just like in shock. Wow. After everything that I did for you, after everything that After Prison Show did for you, $5,000 of $14,331. There's about $9,000 left. 9000 you know what? That's crazy. What if... Because Danny knows that I gave him that $5,000 on camera. He knows that that much is out there. Well, there's still $9,000 left. Is he trying to convince everybody that I just pocketed the rest of that? That's exactly what he's trying to do. Screenshot. What you're looking at right here is the screenshot that I want to show you that proves everything. I need to pull this up on my phone as well as we're looking at this. $5,000 in cash is what I gave to Danny prior to him leaving to go See his family for the first time in 40 years. The GoFundMe was created on December the 15th, 2018. The video where I gave him that $5,000 in cash. I don't have the exact date right here, but I will have that at the bottom. Time stamped on this video, or at least some words saying the date that that video came out. So by December the 20th of 2018, I had sent him 500 more dollars. He had literally just gotten to where he was going with that $5,000 in cash. On December the 21st, I sent $2,000 to his brother for some motorcycle or two motorcycles. I can't remember what. So we're now at $2,500. On December the 28th, 2018, I sent him $300. On December the 30th, 2018, I sent him $2,500. Folks, that is a grand total of $5,300 plus the $5,000 that I gave him before he left, that's $10,300. The GoFundMe raised $14,331. Well, this was the next bit of static that we would have, and this was pretty bad. He's up in where he's at with his family. I'm in control of the rest of the money, the $9,000. He's asking me to send him money sporadically throughout the time that he's up there and I'm doing so, but I'm also telling him, hey, look, I can't send you money right this second because GoFundMe just went and snatched over $6,000 out of my bank account. He didn't believe this. Oh, what? What? This email right here that I'm sharing with you guys is from GoFundMe from this time. And it says, it looks like WePay, which is the payment processor for GoFundMe, recovered the $6,459.96 withdrawn on December the 20th. So I had withdrew the money from GoFundMe and then they recovered it. They snatched it back out of my account. They were going to be putting back into my account because we had chargebacks. At first it was $3,000 in chargebacks. And here real quick is a screenshot from those chargebacks. They were going to be putting $3,547.56 back into my account, but then they stopped that because there was another chargeback of $970, which left me 
with 2,500 going back into my account. That left this GoFundMe at $10,331. I sent Danny and gave Danny $10,300. But Joe, the $31. Hey, you know what the, uh, the, the fee for sending money via Western Union is for like thousands of dollars? It's pretty high. I paid all of those fees, so could I keep that 31 bucks? I think I even asked him that like jokingly. Hey, Danny, there's still like $31 left. Can I keep that? But when all of this was taking place and I was, and he would be asking me for money and I'm like, look, Danny, I can't send you anything right now because I'm fighting with GoFundMe over $6,500 that they snatched out of my account. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't believing this. I was even showing him this and he still wasn't believing. But I'm showing all of you this because I didn't take but $31. I took $31. Also, keep this in mind, too. It was over $10,000 with that GoFundMe, over $5,000 with the other GoFundMe. We're talking about probably $16,000. I had to eat that in taxes, which, you know, which is another couple of thousand dollars that you just got to pay in taxes for that. I was thinking, oh, I can write this off. You know, we're doing charitable work. Well, it's not going to a nonprofit, so they don't consider it that. So it's not a tax write-off. So not only did I pay the fees from Western Union, I was also paying the taxes on this as well. But whatever, that was my mistake. I should have had my accounting better back then. I do now. I never really wanted to share with you guys like the rockiness and the, you know, the, the static that we were dealing with during this time because this was such a powerful time. We sent this man to go see his family. Like he came back, there was this major video we put together. It was a beautiful thing. But he didn't come back with a whole hell of a lot to show for. So maybe that's why he tried to put that $9,000 on me. I hope I cleared that up right there. That was December of 2018, going into January of 2019. And 2019 would be the year that it would just all fall apart for me and Danny. And I need to resort to my notes at this point. Yeah, I got it right there. Danny came back, we had like two videos right then. Well, by February 11th of 2019, we would be uploading the fifth video featuring Danny for the year. And it was in that fifth video where Danny was talking about he wanted to take a break. Things had gotten rocky between us. He had a relationship. He wanted to take a break. He wanted to focus on his relationship. And I was like, okay, fine. You know, that's good. But a lot of people didn't like that. A lot of people didn't like that. They felt like this man was taking the money and running. And, you know, who was I to tell him, hey, look, you can't go nowhere. People just want to continue to see you. Well... The next video that we would end up filming with Danny would be on April the 22nd of 2019. But prior to that video, and in that span between the time of February 11th through April the 22nd, this would be probably one of the most, it probably was the rockiest situation that we went through, the worst situation. During this time, I wasn't in very much contact with Danny. Danny wasn't doing videos. At this point, I had stopped paying him as well and told him that. Hey, Danny, look, I'm not paying you no more. We're not working together. We're not making any more money off of your videos. And if we are, we're not making that much. I'm not going to pay you forever. It's just not going to work that way. I have paid you well and I have paid you fair. And I think it was during that time. Actually, I know it was. It was during that time when I stopped paying him that he wanted me to take his videos down. And I said, absolutely not. I'm not taking these videos down. Now, what happened was he had sent me a text message out of the blue. I hadn't talked to him in a little while. Said, take my videos down. I didn't respond to that text message. And then fast forward into April. We're talking a couple of weeks later, maybe a month. I got two phone calls on the same morning from two different people. Bright and early in the morning. And both of them were saying, Joe, you need to watch your back. Danny's drunk. He's talking all sorts of crazy stuff. Talking about he's going to come kill you and your wife. I ended up doing a bobo right after that. I mean, it was time for the bobo. We were doing the bobo in the morning time then. Now we do it in the afternoon. I was like, man, what? You know, what the hell? And of course, I mentioned it on the bobo. And that was a mistake. I was emotionally charged from this situation. Probably a little worried too. So I mentioned it. Talking about how ungrateful Danny was. And, you know, this is what you want to do. That was a mistake that I would not really be able to live down because, you know, some clout chasing people would end up taking that making videos saying that I was a snitch. Let me tell you something. 
Call it what you want to call it. Somebody threatens to kill you and your family, what you gonna do? You gonna hold court in the street? You really built like that? And I share this with you, this is just me sharing this. So this is only uh, hearsay, right? Well, I do have a video that I thought that I didn't have anymore. And I don't remember when this took place. It was probably on that same day, as a matter of fact. When I heard that, did the bobo. Probably later on that day, I tried to call Danny. And he picked up and he was not happy to talk to me. And later on, after we were able to resolve the situation, I told him I was gonna delete the video. And I did. But I was actually able to recover that. I found it. Crazy enough. And I wanna share a little snippet of this with you guys because you deserve to see some of the shit that I was dealing with with this man. You guys saw one side of the one side of the story and that's me, that's on me because I always wanted to protect this man's image. Here was a man who came on our channel who became so loved and so many people did so much to help this man. I never wanted to have that tarnished. I was so proud of what we did to help this guy that no matter what, I never wanted that to get tarnished. I never put this video out there. I could have. But I'm going to put a little bit of it out here right now for you guys. Just so you can see a little bit of what it was like when shit was really ugly between me and this guy. Okay, you're violating my rights. I'm not going to take you to court. I'm going to deal with the person like man because I deal with shit like a man. I don't call the police on nobody. That's why I went to prison. Because I don't call the police on nobody. I'm not going to take you to court. You're violating my rights. Okay? You went beyond what you did. I asked you and you didn't respond back to me. So I took it personally. All right, so I'll take the videos down and, and we're good. We are good. I promise you. We are good. You won't hear from me no more. Well, look, I'm sorry that it you know, this is how it is. I wish you nothing but the best. No, it's not how it is. It's you violated, man. You, you make judgment calls on what you see, but you don't understand how other people see it, man. What you did know? I make a judgment call you on? Made you made judgment. You kept my videos when I sent you a text and you didn't respond back to me. You made that judgment call. Danny, I felt like the people deserved to see those videos. And I didn't know if you were going to come back or not. No, this, is, this is my privacy. You got to respect my privacy first, not them. Okay? I don't give a fuck about them. I wish you nothing but the best, and that's well, it. Right now, I'm waiting for some family to fly in on the north. No, yeah, man. I can take care of some business. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you called me. And they'll be here today. I'm really glad you called me. Boy, they're going to come. I've been waiting for a call. I'm <laughs> waiting for a call from you, and I asked you nicely. Were they going to come kill me, Danny? It's acting, it's, it's, it's getting into, it's interfering with my life. And when I tell you guys that that's not the only conversation that we had that was like that, we had some, some bumps along the road. So I hope that that kind of showcases, you know, what it was like for me personally, trying to keep things on an even keel with this guy. But I got a little bit ahead of myself and I need to go back and finish up the talk about the Hollywood movie deal. I never finished that. This all happened in like December and January and maybe by February. Hell, I don't know. Maybe it was in February, right before Danny wanted to take a break, that we hadn't heard from these guys in a little while and we had been having tons of phone calls and all sorts of planning and everything was seeming to move, to be moving along. Well, after not hearing from these guys for a little while, I finally call. I'm like, yo, what's going on? We haven't heard from you. And the producer dude is damn near in tears. Oh my God, it's not going to work out. Nobody's going to finance the movie because the main actor is a Trump supporter. No bullshit. That was the reason that we were given. And I actually went and looked it up. And this main actor has actually been on Fox News talking about the fact that he's been blacklisted in Hollywood because of his political ties or his political side or whatever. So there was some truth to that. But how the hell was I supposed to explain this to Dane? And I tried to. And he didn't want to hear none of this. He was convinced that I sabotaged this deal. So what I'm getting ready to share with you in a moment is a letter that I asked this producer to make. Send this to Danny to prove to him that this ain't on me. Like that I didn't do this. So there's that as well. During the time that all of this was falling apart, we're talking about April of 2019. I did the Twitch stream, that was a mistake. Everybody was taking this and running with this. Joe's a snitch, oh my God. He's I wanted to 
even after all of this, still protect Danny. So we did a video, and that video was called What Happened with Danny. We filmed that video on April the 22nd. And it was also somewhere around this time when I took down all of Danny's videos. I think that was the straw that broke the camel's back after that phone call. I took down Danny's videos. They didn't stay down for very long, probably just a couple of days. And it was on April the 22nd, literally just four days after that phone call, that I was back seeing Danny again, this time and paying him again. And now I'm not paying him every week, I'm paying him once a month. And it's not that much, it's like three or $400 a month at the very most. I'm showing him on the phone what his videos are making per month. So, you know, I was trying to make him believe that I was paying him as fairly as I possibly could. But on April the 22nd, 2019, we were back together, we filmed the video, What Happened to Danny, or What Happened with Danny, trying to reconcile all of the BS and trying to put it underneath the rug. Because again, I'm still trying to protect this man. And that didn't really work out. People were actually starting to see the true colors of this guy. And there wasn't nothing that we could do about that. I was so discouraged by that because again, we had done so much. Oh, I just wanted it to be this fairy tale happy ending. But it was seeming more and more evident that that was not going to be the case. By May the 17th, 2019, we uploaded the second to last video ever with Danny, which was pretty suitably titled, pretty fitting title considering where we are today, the most disliked person on APS. A lot of people did not like the title of that video. And I did that. I did that. Because I thought to myself, well, if I title it this way, people are going to like him. And they'll be mad at me. Oh, Joe, he's not the most disliked. You are. I mean, I was literally putting me under the bus to protect the image and reputation of this man. On June the 1st, 2019, we filmed the very last video that we would ever film with Danny. And that was him moving. He was moving out of state. He was moving on. And a part of me was actually like, good. You know? good. Maybe this can finally be the end of this thing and we can just be done with it. But it would be shortly thereafter, probably just a month or two, when my wife would call me pretty shaken up telling me that Danny had just called her work. He knew where she worked at. And when that happened, I lost it. I called Danny back immediately and we, we got into it. And it was ugly. And I told him, a lot of things. Whoever come down here, you ever try to do something, I'm not going to hold court with you in the street, but your ass will go back to jail. I will lock your ass up. And I don't care how that sounds, but you're not going to try to, and I don't know why he called my wife. I know why he called my wife to try to intimidate her. She would tell me, boom, we would end up on the phone. Oh my God, how crazy is this man really? Well, he really is crazy. And Danny, I'm speaking directly to you because I know you are hot watching this. Didn't have to be this way. Tried to reach out to you just a couple of weeks ago. Maybe that's what got the, you know, got the idea rolling like F me. That phone call where I told Danny if he tried to do anything, I wouldn't hesitate to get his ass locked up was the last time that I talked to him. And even after that, months, I mean, this is a whole year. We're, we're one year separated from that. People asking all the time, hey, Joe, where's Danny? How's Danny doing? Last I heard, he's doing okay. Much as I didn't even want to protect this man's image anymore. I'm still doing it. Last I heard, he's okay. Yeah, I've tried to get in contact with him, but I've had no luck. You know, I, I did. And then we're here, filming this crazy video. I did the very best that I could with this man. Tried to play as fair as I possibly could with money. It was always about money. But over the course of time, matter, matter of fact, I want to share with you real quick, as I'm wrapping this up, I want to share with you this comment that I left on the video that I watched yesterday, I left this bright and early in the morning. I'm sure this comment since been deleted. I don't know if it has, but I said, wow, unbelievable. You sit here and say a lot of lies in this video saying I pocketed $9,000 off that Christmas GoFundMe. I've got Western Union receipts with your name on them from when we sent you to Boston. I actually lost money on that after the chargebacks. I can't believe after everything I and After Prison Show did for you, you would sit up here and try to make me look like I'm the bad guy. I saved your life. After Prison Show saved your life. And I played extremely fair with you, especially when it came to money. 
paid your rent when you couldn't, kept you on a payroll for as long as I possibly could, even when you weren't doing videos. But enough was never enough. I respected your privacy when you asked me to do so and you come back with this shit, a bunch of lies. Trying to destroy me and make something for yourself, you were jealous when the camera wasn't on you. That was the truth. Because after Danny came Rabbit, and Darnell Phillips, and Jew Man, and a lot of other people, and he didn't like that. The videos we filmed with you changed you after you saw the views. But thank God I filmed and recorded everything, right? Because I've got a lot of proof of who I am and what I've done. And I'm very sad to see this after everything I personally did for you, as well as the supporters of After Prison Show did for you as well. Danny changed. Over the course of time, he changed. A lot of things changed him. He was drinking a lot. That was ugly. He became, I don't know, just different. And I hate that that happened. I hate that I couldn't have done more, but you know what? It is what it is. I've had to explain this situation to the people that we're working with now, Banky. Well, Banky's the only one I've explained it to, but it just sickens me because the bottom line is there's a few things that I want to leave you guys with. I have always tried to help people. After Prison Show has always tried to help people. And in, not in every situation does that work out, and sometimes, yes, that leads to drama. This isn't for everybody. People change, and people turn into people that we never knew that they really wore. Those true colors come to the surface. But I've always done the very most that I can possibly do to try to navigate whatever the situation may be. And the sad reality of it is, is Danny was the person that After Prison Show did the very most for. We saved this man's life. I ask all of you, had it not been for After Prison Show, had we never met him at that job fair on August the 2nd, 2018, where would he be now? Hopefully he'd have made it. But it probably ain't hard to imagine that there's a damn good chance that he wouldn't have. A lot of good things came to you, Danny, because of After Prison Show. And I don't appreciate this at all. I'm sorry that this is the way that it is. I'm done with it. I'm washing my hands of the situation. Don't care what you got to say, and I'm going to move on. We helped you the most, and you turned into the most ungrateful person. And a lot of people started to see that. And I am going to continue to do the very most that I can do on a daily basis to continue to work with people, help people, and try to do the very best that I can with the After Prison Show. But I'll tell you something. I've learned quite a bit from working with you. And I try to use the situation that we went through to try to ensure that that doesn't happen again in the future. Can't guarantee that it won't, but I'm a damn sure try to do my very best. To all of the viewers who are taking the time to watch this, if you watch this in, in its entirety, I apologize for this. This was not the video I wanted to upload today. I've got a super awesome video with Darnell Phillips that's not gonna get nowhere near the views that this probably will. And we also just did a cooking video with Banky and another sit down with him, and we're gonna begin to work with him, trying to help him in any way that we can. And also there's Chris. Chris just had a job interview today. So I'll be curious to know how that works out. I truly apologize that I had to share this with you guys, but this is my response. And this is the truth. The untold story that I never really wanted to tell you guys about, but I felt like I had to, because enough is enough. And if you don't take nothing else from this, you know, I wanna hope that I can end this on something positive. You know, no matter what you've heard in this video and no matter how ugly that may be, I don't want you to remember the Danny chapter on After Prison Show as a bunch of drama and just a really ugly thing, which I know won't be easy to do. But I, I'm going to remember it, and I hope that you will possibly try to, as no matter how it turned out, we saved that man. We did that together, and I'm proud to have been able to partake in that with you guys. And we're going to continue to do what we do and try our damnedest to just focus on the positive. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. And that's it.